So in today's video, we'll be talking about seven scientifically proven methods to help you study and boost your retention to pass your exam. My parents are professors, they're in academia, and they're really smart. My siblings are super smart, so they set the standard high. But personally, I couldn't, I was more interested in the arts and I found things like sitting down to study very difficult and you know that wouldn't fly too much because I, I mean I didn't want to be that the one who isn't producing a result so I had to figure out ways to study so I did my research and I researched, researched into what would work and what would work for me and what works for other people so that you can actually get results in your studying rather than just doing it in vain and not getting results putting in effort and not getting results. That's a pet peeve of mine. So that's how I ended up researching a lot. I love reading. I read a lot of novels. Uh, like I said, as a child, I used to uh, spend time, a lot of time alone. So I'd spend time reading and, you know, finding out information, reading encyclopedias. Books can be your friends. They can be your teachers. I was a bit of a loner, so I would spend that time reading. So anyway, I did the research and these are the methods that, I've, that have worked for me and some of them I didn't know that they were scientifically researched and backed and I was happily surprised so I'm going to share that with you today. The first one is spaced repetition. This means that you just space your study sessions over time, right? So you study something more than once and then you keep increasing the time between which you study that topic again. The way I use spaced repetition is very interesting. When I was studying for the bar exam, this came handy a lot. I passed the bar exam in one go, not because I'm so special, but because I learned the study methods that worked for me. So how I used spaced repetition is course outlines. So when we joined uh, the school of law where we were going to study for the bar exam, they gave us course, light, course outlines for each of our nine subjects. They are very wide, a lot of information you need to memorize and a lot of information cases, legal stuff, you know the drift. So they outline it for you. So what I would do when I was studying is that I would mark a topic that I've studied. I mark it with like a check mark or something. And then I just go through the course outline whenever I'm studying. And then when I go through the course outline again, I notice the ones that I have checked out. If I've checked everything, I go over it again and see if I've checked it a second time, that means I've gone over it the second time or the third time or the fourth time. So when, by doing that, I knew that I'd studied a topic more than once or more than twice or three or four times. So it's important to keep track of your studying this way so that you know that this is not the first time I'm interacting with this topic. The second one that I loved is a scientific study method called metacognition. Sounds fancy, but it's simply read it for you so that I don't mess it up. It is regulating one's own learning process, including strategies for planning, monitoring, and evaluating learning. What that means is you're just going to have to set goals and have a plan for your study session. This means that you, you got to know yourself. Knowing yourself is going to be the beginning of studying. Like I told you, I personally used to find it so difficult to sit down and study because it was boring to me. I like drawing, I like art. As a child, I would always spend my time drawing and coloring, I had coloring books, loved it. However, whenever my parents sat me down on like study, I hated it. I would do it, but I hated it. So I needed a way to study that would be interesting to me. And that factored in when I was planning my study sessions. So. I would plan my study sessions like, okay, I want to study this topic. I would have, like, I want to study front office, the topic front office. By the end of this study session, I want to memorize my, like, at least half of the content that I read. That's one goal. Uh, I want to do an active recall. Um, I'll talk about it in the next point, but I want to do active recall. So I'll use my mind maps, active recall, I talked about in a different video, to see how much I've retained during the study session and another thing is if, if this is the second time like I, from point one i have already read this before this is my second time i'm studying it before the study session starts i will do a brain dump of everything that i already know in that session and see how much i remember so you see i have a plan the mind maps are because i like creativity and i like to make the study session fun i'm using active recall i'm using all these tools and i have a plan and i can see 
how well I'm doing that's basically metacognition. Just have a plan for your study sessions. The third one now is active recall, my favorite. Active recall basically is instead of just passively reading and reviewing your notes or your books, you actively retrieve the information from memory. So basically quizzing yourself. So simple. When you read a passage, cover it up and try and recall what you read. It's literally as simple as that. Now, how I put this into practice is when I was studying for the bar exam, first of all, how I take notes in class was short, concise points that I know I'm going to come back to, right? That if I didn't have my books, I could just use my notes and I wouldn't completely be uh, in trouble during the exam. So it's actually quite uh, key information, right? So I would have a place organized where I can look through my notes. And then when I'm studying a topic, in my study session i have all the have all the notes right i would read the whole thing and then close it up and try and remember using a mind map mind maps are life-changing because they help you create connections between all sorts of information and this is especially important if you have a large amount of information so you need a way for your brain to organize it so it's easier to retrieve mind maps does that it it uses both sides of the brain, the logic and the creativity. Da Vinci used to use them. So what I did was I used the mind maps to help me recall, active recall mind maps. I've talked about it in all of my love videos because it's life changing. So that's what I would do. Another way you can do this is oral quizzing. I remember when I was in high school, a friend of mine would quiz me before an exam and this is a subject i was not good at so what happened was i was i wasn't confident in the exam but after the session i was actually one of the highest grading in the class just because of the recall i had to recall inform a lot of information and exams isn't necessarily about really it is about your understanding but how much can you recall of that how much can you put into words put on paper so you can also use the oral one like you can ask yourself a question and answer it orally and see how much you remember this is just a test see how much you remember exam tests how much you remember and how well you can put it on paper and for which is dual coding information combining verbal and visual information so for example the way i'm talking about my mind maps i love them it does that perfectly Instead of just having written notes, they're all just bland to look at, you can create diagrams using the, the information. Information. So there are things that are easy for me to remember and things that are hard for me to remember. So if it's hard for me to remember, I just want to employ things like using melodies, using flashcards, whatever I need to do to get the information in my brain. The next one is interleaved practice. What you do is you mix up different topics in one study session instead of just focusing on one topic the beauty of this is that you'll have to, you'll learn to make connections between a different subject more information and then finally we have the seventh one elaborative interrogation this just means ask why and how questions rather than just trying to memorize facts like for example i'm a lawyer so i'm more familiar with such things there's something called the oxygen principle so you'd ask yourself why is it called the oxygen principle in law it was like a way for the court to ensure substantive justice has been done. So the person who named it was like, oxygen has been, you've introduced a breath of fresh air into the law because the law can be very, you see the law is an ass, where we can penalize you for petty things like you misspelled this person's name or there was a typo in the figure so we can't award you what you're asking it's more than the jurisdiction of the court small things like that but in essence it was a typo that you could have amended so instead of focusing on these minor things we want to focus on substantive justice and give people substantive justice so if you think about the reason why you'll understand when the exam comes and asks you what is the oxygen principle, what's the overriding objective, you can understand why because you have done a little bit of background on the information. I've dumped a lot of information on you, but I hope it helped. Pick the ones that work for you. All of this can be synthesized into a few steps. Do the mind maps, do the active recall mind maps, have a timetable with the course outline to check them out when you've done it and then explain to yourself and add story to your studying and 
you're good if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me you can check the link in the description we can set up a study plan for you and diagnose your study issues so that you get the best grades that you can because it's possible for everybody so i hope you enjoyed the video have a good one love you bye